Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today we are discussing the Vacheron Constantin Malt Chronograph. You can see and you can purchase this reference 47120 in rose gold on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch, with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and actually complete pricing details for this rose gold malt chronograph. The watch you see here debuted at SIHH in 2004, and it combines several threads of the best of Vacheron Constantin's heritage, from its reputation as a établisseur par excellence to its well-established reputation for handsome lugs and fascinating intricate dial designs with immense charisma and magnetic character. So this watch has all of that and more in a case that's a wearable 41.5 millimeters in diameter. And that's not counting the crown or the chronograph pushers. The watch is reasonably slim, however, at 11 millimeters thick with a double-stepped conical bezel, it does slide easily underneath a dress cuff, and this watch is absolutely appropriate for formal attire. The timepiece has a reasonable span lugged to lug for those with smaller wrists like myself, 48.8 millimeters works well. I would say that on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference, you could wear this one well with both physical security so it won't move around and visual panache real style. The watch has a lug spacing for those who would like to start accessorizing before they take delivery, 22 millimeters. It uses a standard width 22 millimeter spacing. The watch has semi-curved spring bars that nicely trace the arc of the case and create a more coherent look and also allow the lugs to be drilled closer to the case for a pivot point that's closer to the center. You can see how the strap pivots a little bit inboard at the end of the lug. That works well when you need to pull it straight down around the tight curve of a small wrist. Now the case is a lovely rose, almost red gold. It does have it a great deal of intensity to its coloration. It's probably a 5N alloy and you can see that the strap is a handsome medium brown to match the case. It complements it well with a light contrasting stitch, a center bolster, as you can see, large rectangular scale alligator leather. The edges are folded and then the underside is a supple calfskin. The clip is simple but thoughtful, featuring Vacheron Constantin's Maltese Cross corporate logo motif as well as high polish. Handsomely made, you can see how the sweep of the lug profile of the watch matches the profile of the buckle itself. Now, of course, the watch does feature a complex case that uses the malt lugs that flare dramatically as they move away from the case. Most lugs thin out as they move away from a case, they taper. The malt style lugs actually flare and expand. So they are, if you look at them, from top to bottom. They are actually broader where they attach to the strap than where they exit the case flank, so they have a lot of character. When I talk about Vacheron Constantin lugs, I'm talking about the company's heritage of building dress watches during the mid-century, 20th century heyday of the brand. If you've ever heard of the Corn de Vache or the Cowhorn lug chronograph, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That was one among many. This watch establishes a modern standard while hewing to the rules of decorum and elegance, to which Vacheron has always been an adherent. Now, there is a fluted profile along the side of the lug that nicely matches the step of the bezel. It adds a little bit of definition and breaks up the mass of metal because the lug is so full and voluminous. The case flank is nicely curved. As you can see, it is slightly bowl-shaped, so it has no sheer squared-off profile to detract from the elegance. The total composition is classical, but contemporary in its outright size. That is to say, the proportions and the detailing do justice to Vacheron's history, but this is a modern watch in every respect. And that starts with the case size of 41 and a half, but it continues on the dial. Dials were simply not this well made during the classical era. First, note the unusual employment of a, a sort of herringbone motif that runs side to side and top to bottom. That is the actual texture of the matte silver dial. You'll also note that outboard, rather than the more common tachymeter scale, which is used to measure the speed of something over a fixed distance. This one uses a telemeter scale, which is a scale that allows you to use the chronograph to measure the distance rather than the speed of an event. So, for instance, during the 
period of World War I trench warfare, telemeters were typically used to gauge the distance of shell impacts, and that is sort of the genesis of telemeters in modern watches, field artillery. So you have that loving tribute to the pocket watch era and the early field watch era, and then inboard you have a highly stylized and radially arrayed set of Arabic numerals for 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, and then you have intermediate dot style indices. So all of them are rose gold, all of them are hand applied. The hands themselves nicely match the flare of the lugs. As you can see, they are extended, faceted, rose gold broadsword style. The sub-registers, which are handsomely countersunk to add another focal plane to the dial, are distinguished by the color of their hands, so constant seconds to correspond to the hours and the minutes of the day in rose gold, and then blue for chronograph minutes to correspond to the chronograph function. You can see that the chronograph pointer is slightly skeletonized and the hand features a large counterweight. It is blued beautifully heat blued to a cobalt so that it contrasts maximally against the base of the dial. I'm going to see if I can get a little bit closer now that the watch is no longer on my wrist, but you can better see that herringbone motif I told you. It comprises the texture of the dial. It adds almost the impression of waves across the dial when you stand about half an arm's length away from it. It creates a texture that is a macro pattern rather than a micro detail. You'll note that the crown is simple blazoned with the Vacheron Constantin Maltese cross logo, and that the chronograph pushers themselves are actually slightly shouldered to make them a bit more voluminous, give them body, give them a physical presence. You can see the actual moving portion of the pusher is quite a bit narrower than the shoulder. So visual balance ensured by the shoulders, and those are little cylinders that exist at the base of the pushers abutting the case. Turn the watch over, and you can see that this is Vacheron Constantin's caliber 1141. I mentioned earlier that Vacheron was an établisseur par excellence, and they are that. Classically, during the 40s, 50s, and 60s, they generally took Jaguar LeCoult or LeCoult calibers, decorated and elaborated them immensely. This is an example of a Lemagne caliber 2310, also known as the basis for the Omega caliber 321 that went to the moon. It is a column wheel, big balance, slow beat, traditional lateral clutch chronograph. Now let's talk a little bit about what you're getting. Okay, 27 millimeters across in Patek Philippe service. This one was known as the CH2770. And yes, it was used by Patek. It's also been used by Breguet and Roger Dubuis. But here, blazing with the traditional finishing hallmarks of Vacheron Constantin, you can see it is executed to the highest standards of Geneva Watchcraft. Let's talk about the mechanics first. Manual wind, 18,000 vibration per hour beat rate. The watch features a giant balance with a Breguet overcoil hairspring beating away all 48 hours of those maximum wind autonomy. The overcoil gives the enormous balance the ability to maintain a constant rate and thus isochronism and precision regardless of the position of the watch with respect to gravity. The overcoil centers the center of gravity of the hairspring. That's why you have an overcoil architecture to resist positional timing deviation. Now there's also a feature that I scarcely see on watches built after the 1960s, and that is a hooking guard for the hairspring. Overcoils, because they do double up over on themselves before they connect to the stud, they can sometimes get a little bit out of sorts with some coils getting caught on others, and in extreme cases, the coil is actually getting caught on the index that holds the stud. Well, with a hooking guard, which is basically a gold wire that runs from the balance cock to the adjacent bridge, you protect the hairspring from accidentally rising up and beyond where it should be as a result of shock or impact. Now, the balance is enormous. As you can see, it's almost one-third of the diameter of the movement. That is old school. So, too, is the lateral clutch. Now, you can see, as I actuate the chronograph, starting and stopping it, you can see see the driving wheel and the intermediate wheel both on the lateral clutch moving into and out of contact with the center. You can also see just as it moves into and out of contact with the center wheel of the chronograph, you will note the horns and the levers of the chronograph as well as the recentering hammers which reset the chronograph when you reset all clustered around the column wheel that is the function selector. So it is a column wheel chronograph with a lateral clutch manually wound, which is a recipe for the most beautiful case back you can possibly imagine. By eliminating the winding rotor and the efficient but colorless vertical clutch mechanism, you ensure that nothing is left to the imagination. You can see all of this movement, all 21 jewels, 
all 27 millimeters. Everything that I turn to the camera and black out is black polished. That is the highest standard of optical finish and when I turn square to the camera, not only can you see all those black polished screw heads, but you can see the glint and the gleam on the edges of the bridges as well as the jewel countersinks, all mirror finished by hand. This is the anglage, or in the case of the jewel sinks, the partridge eye finish that allows those who own loops to arguably get the most out of their watches and I would recommend that if you want to see what micro level hand finishing looks like in the best standards of Geneva you're going to want to buy a good loop of at least six power magnification when you purchase this watch. Immaculately finished on the back beautifully stylized and executed on the front, comfortable on the wrist with a versatile size to suit many. You can see and you can purchase this Vacheron Constantin Malt Chronograph on our website.